Hi, and uh, welcome to the quick demo of my scatter tool. Um, the scatter tool is a pretty common rite of passage for a mail scripter, but I feel like this one has some pretty neat features that make it worth sharing anyhow. Um, so you can just launch the tool, hit scatter, and get a result. This may not be the result you're looking for, even though it's not necessarily a bad look. It's just you probably don't want to scatter cubes in space. And, and maybe you do, in which case you have already done everything you need to. Um, but obviously you can adjust the total number of things you want to scatter, you can adjust its distribution bias, a lower value will cause them to cluster in the center, and a higher value will cause them to spread out more. Um, you can control the uh, max X, Y, and Z scatter ranges, uh, so that you, and, so, and, and they can be controlled independently uh, if I wanted to scatter very, you know, very high on the Y axis, but not much anywhere else, you can do that. Um, you can do the same with rotation. Uh, for each axis, you can control the maximum rotation values possible. Um, and same with scale. You can control min and max scale values um, and get very different results based on that. Um, but you're probably not just looking to, uh, to scatter cubes. Um, and so this has some more practical applications. You can take this, uh, this tree model. Um, and you can scatter it over a piece of terrain. This is a, a piece of terrain that you might find something that had been dumped out of a game engine or something, pretty similar to any sort of height field or uh, you know just terrain mesh that you might come up with. Um, maybe not the most beautifully sculpted, but the same general idea. So I'm going to go ahead and pick a preset for trees. Um, and what that, what that does is it sets up the scatter tool with a few preset options. Um, that I have determined work pretty well for trees. Um, and then I will set a constraint target, uh, and then I will just hit scatter, and uh, there is the result that you get with just the default tree settings. Uh, and as you can see, it's sort of biased towards high points uh, on the mesh, but not completely. Um, and that's r very dependent on where the original piece of geometry that you're scattering is located. If I put it down below, um, it will cluster into the low spots on the terrain and get a very different look than where it was before. Uh, and what usually works best for me is somewhere in the middle of the height or of the height field, uh, and you get kind of a nice organic, even distribution across the uh, across the surface. Now, as you can see, sometimes it will uh, cluster them on top of each other, which isn't necessarily desirable. So you can just constrain it individually and move it, and it will stay attached to the terrain break up some of this uh, unfortunate clustering. Uh, and then when you're done, just hit delete, and now your mesh can move as if it's not constrained anymore. Um, and one other feature that it's got, which is not useful for trees, but could be uh, useful for other things, is you can set it to follow the surface normals by just checking that option. Um, and that will give you trees that point uh, in the direction uh, y-axis up on the normal of the surface that they're attached to. All right, uh, thank you very much for watching. Um, unfortunately, because I created this tool as a LEGO employee, I cannot share it with the general public, but if you're an employer and you'd like to take a look at how I've done this, um, please email me. My, uh, my email is on my website. Um, all right, thank you very much.